Welcome back into another Stock Contractor interview. I'm Andrew Rosario, part of here, the PRSA social media team, and I'm able to sit down with Phenom Genetics, Matt Sharpening. Thank you for joining us here, Matt. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. And and uh, just to kind of, you know, get our listeners you know, acquainted with you, some may, same, some may know and some may not know your story, but tell me a little bit about the history of Phenom Genetics and how you got your start in the bucking business. Uh, yeah, mine's totally not typical of, of how most people get started in the bucket bowl business. Um, I didn't grow up in rodeo. I didn't grow up on a ranch or around horses or cattle to a, with rodeo cattle, I guess I should say. We had uh, some beef cattle and that was about it. Uh, I was a race car driver and I so owned, owned a tool franchise. Um, and I was with my job. I had had to relocate and wanted to find wanted to buy a horse and board a horse where we were living just to, for animal interaction for my daughter. And doing that, I ran across a bucking bull website and was like, man, where do they come from? You know, what's, you know, that that's a cool way of going about it. Cool way to have animals and yet be able to go and compete with those animals. Um, and so, yeah, just uh, fell in love with it from there and never expected to be doing this for what doing this for a living. But, uh, what's it 16 years ago, or 17 years ago now so and here we are this is this is what we do awesome so i know uh you you're mainly into the the bucking bull business you know you're you uh, have a lot of successful lines in another association um but just tell me a little bit about um how you go about taking care of these animals you said you come from a race car background uh, my stepdad was a funny car and drag drag car racer so i kind of know a little bit about uh, that racing scene and, and what the work goes into that racing scene, especially when it comes to those high tech engines and what you have to do to, to take care of them. You know, you have to make sure that every single detail is in, in order to be able to make sure the whole machine goes. So what would you say are some of the things you do maybe health and recovery wise that may be different from other contractors that kind of gives you that edge or makes it a phenom genetics bucking animal? You know, the, the big thing that what I've really fallen in love with is the nutrition side for the animal. So much can be done nutritionally um, for their well-being from the time that um, they're weaned off their mothers all the way through. Mm -hmm. uh, people forget that a lot of times, like, we're not feeding a beef animal. We're not feeding a dairy animal. We're feeding an athlete. And so what we're after is totally different than what most people are. And if you're just going to go to a feed store, like when I started here in Minnesota, in Minnesota, there's not a lot of, there's very few bucking bull breeders. Mm -hmm. And so when I went into the feed store, they're like, well, we got this great dairy feed. We got this great beef feed. And I'm like, well, I'm not planning on eating any of these. And I sure as hell ain't going to try milking one of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> we need to feed these guys as an athlete. Yeah. And so uh, I've been very blessed that uh, Dr. Overbo, my veterinarian, is a genius when it comes to nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, him and I have developed our own concentrate pellet that has all the things that a bucking bull needs. Not just what, it, you know, not, we're not worried about marbling in the meat and, and milk production, all this other stuff. It's all about bone structure, tendon strength, all these different things. And then putting on that lean muscle and high energy and, and all these different things. Plus even go as far as like in the summertime, we add another supplement to it uh, that doc has developed. Basically what it does is helps that animal go from different forages when we go from rodeo to rodeo, we change our forage. We trucked in all of our feed from Minnesota, but the forage change it has an effect on an animal. So we have a supplement in there that helps them adjust from different types of hay and then also helps them to cool because it's a different climate than we're in in Minnesota. Mm. So that supplement also will help them vasodilate and put uh, bull cools by blood, blood flow to their skin. Mm -hmm. And this supplement helps them with that as well. And then, so nutrition is a huge part of it. The other things that uh, we use uh, pulse equipment on them. So pulse electromagnetic frequency therapy, um, that helps a ton in recovery. It helps us show where an animal is sore before they'll even tell us that they're sore. Um, that definitely makes a big difference. Like when we go out on our run, we leave with, Oh, 30 to 35 head of bulls, depending on the year, uh, at the end of June. And we don't get to, those bulls don't get to come home till the end of September. So they're on the road for, you know, 90 days of 
and getting getting used a lot, you know, get going to work. And so we've been very fortunate. A lot of um, when we get to Pendleton, which is our last rodeo on the run, you know, our bulls are still big and thick and strong and, you know, minus any little sports related injuries or nagging things that we have, you know, we're usually pretty solid when it comes to that. But feed is a integral part of that. Like I'm getting ready to, I'm in Minnesota now, I uh, just picked up feed. I'll be bringing eight ton of grain. I'll go out to Bozeman to the rodeo and bring eight ton of grain with me. So then he has enough to get through. Oh, almost to probably he can get everything up till Lewiston. And then we'll have to bring probably three more ton out to finish out the run. That's awesome. Yeah, that, so. And that's kind of one of the things that uh, made me gravitate towards you and, and your stock contracting business and how you go about taking care of your animals is you, you did kind of get a, a, I wouldn't say a late start, but you, you got to start, you know, that was kind of your own, you know, you weren't, you know, yeah. brought up into this business and you really take a, a, a big um, leap in the science of it and more of like the recovery aspect and what actually goes into the animal, not saying that other people don't, but that's something that you really focus on. That's what really uh, made me gravitate towards, towards your stock contracting business. Yeah. You know, the, the big thing, what people have to remember is an animal will only buck as good as they feel. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that's nagging or they're just not feeling quite right, they're not going to perform like they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And I've had people tell me, well, I can't afford to feed that way. Well, my theory is I can't afford not to feed that way because if that animal's worth having and worth feeding, he's worth feeding. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is like we start when we wean calves, they start on our bull feed day one. Gotcha. We don't start them on something else. You know, the old, Old theory is, well, you know, like a young kid, you can feed them almost anything and, and they'll grow and develop. Yes, but the problem in a bucking bull is that is also the time when bone structure and tendon strength are being developed. And it's such an important part of it. So my theory has always been, I want them to have the best possible feed that they can have from the day we wean them till the day they die. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that is, that's all they get fed here. Um, because I want, uh, the other thing is people get mistake that we're feeding an animal. We're actually feeding the rumen of the animal. A rumen, it's so different in a, in a bull versus a horse of what you're feeding. So the rumen will actually create everything basically that that animal needs the, the good bugs in their gut. So you're feeding that to create everything, but in the same token, there's certain things that, that they don't produce. Well, then you got to make sure that that whatever it is you're trying to get into them is room and protected. You can't just feed them like a horse supplement and think that that animal is going to be able to absorb it mm -hmm. because they can't, the rumen will destroy it and they'll never get to use it. And all you did was waste money. So there's a lot of science to it in the nutrition side of it. I'm just kind of a feed geek. I love that stuff because it's like, once that animal is born, we can only control two things. That's how we handle them and how we feed them. Mm -hmm. And those are two huge things. And the handling part of it is, you know, we always talk about no bad experiences. If an animal won't do their job, if there's pain involved, and that's, that's a big thing. People, if people under understand animal psychology, bulls or animals won't do something that hurts. Mm -hmm. They'll just stop. They, they will refuse. And there's nothing we can do to make one do it. So the great thing about, what that does for in the bucking bull world and, and the bucking horse world is if these animals didn't want to be doing their job, there's nothing we could do to make them do it. Like we can't make one do it. We can make one quit doing it by not handling them properly. But as long as we keep it a good experience for them, that there's no bad experiences, those animals love to go do their job. And that's, that's the other side of it. You know, when you talk about feed and handling, it's feed them right and no bad experiences. Those are the two most important things. Hundred percent, and you can and you can see that, especially in your bucking bulls. Like the 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 try in, in your animals is is like crazy. Like you can see, like they they want to be there and they want to give it their all. And it's something that you know I I recognize. Well, and kind of going back into like the recovery aspect, um, mm -hmm. you talked about the PEMF and the and the electromagnetic electromagnetic pulse uh, uh, recovery. Do you do uh, red light therapy or anything else like that to kind of help with the soreness or anything like that for the animals? No, we don't. We have lots of, of anti-inflammatories built into our feed. Okay. 
um, which is a huge plus, and you can definitely notice a difference with that. But between that and and the pulse unit, I mean, that's those are our two go to things that keep those animals going strong and be able to. The other thing that what people don't realize is it's bucking's not the hard part of what they do. Mm-hmm. It more so it's the travel. It's getting on a truck and riding and, you know, balancing and, and, you know, riding in that truck for however long they have to be in there. Mm-hmm. That's something that can soar a bull up more than bucking. Bucking, they're bred to do that. That's what their, their job is. Mm-hmm. But the, the trucking part of it. So we always try to make sure we pull, if anything that's getting any type of soreness, either they need time off or they need pulse treatments or, you know, whatever the case may be. Those are the important things um, that that we really go. I haven't done red light therapy. I've had bulls had acupuncture done on them, chiropractic work, um, you know, it, all different types of surgeries. You know, the thing is with the bull industry or with our bucking bulls, there's no expense spared when it comes to the care of the animal. Mm-hmm. So whatever that animal needs to feel the best he can feel, that's what we do. It's not always financially smart, but it's not about that. In what we do, it's all about the animal all the time. It has nothing to do. It's not about me. It's not about anything else. It's it's what's the best for that animal to give him the absolute best life he can have. That's awesome. Uh, kind of my next question is, uh, do you do you keep pedigrees of your, your animals? And if so, how many generations do you go back? Man, yeah. So everything... What, what a lot of people don't realize is the American Bucking Bull Incorporated, which is the registry for bucking bulls in America, mm-hmm. as well as Australia, Brazil, Canada, everywhere, basically. Um, there, It is the fourth largest bovine registry in the country. There's thousands of bucking bulls in this country. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, everything we have is all registered. We know exactly how far they go back and, and it's generation upon generation. And that's what you know, with, with Sankey Pro Rodeo and Wade Sankey, we talk about uh, the comparisons between the bulls and the horses and, and the bull, the evolution of bulls happens so much faster than horses yeah. because the bulls just don't last as long. A horse will last till they're 20 years old. Mm-hmm. Bulls do not, you know, I mean, your prime for a bull is five to eight years old is when they're truly in their prime. So with that being said, they evolve faster. Mm-hmm. So you're changing things and, and, you know, we're bucking calves before they're a year old, we're bucking them to see, you know, how good they are. And if they have the talent that, that we're looking for to be that next generation of superstars. And then we compete with them as yearlings and two-year-olds to go at bull competitions and make money with them too, you know, with a dummy on their back. And then they'll usually hit the rodeo run once they hit three. Um, But yeah, so it's numerous generations, you know, our, our superstar and our once in a lifetime bull was airtime. Well, it's, it's pretty crazy. Now, if you look at, like I looked the other day and I think there's 12 airtime calves on our truck right now. Um, you know, sons or grandsons, I should say of airtime. So there's a lot of our stuff that goes back to the big crazy spotted bull. Um, but the difference he's made in, in our program is astronomical. Awesome. And that's, so that's of, been good. Awesome. That's kind of a great segue into um, some of the livestock that I've kind of done some research on that you have going down the road right now. And it's kind of going to talk about, mm-hmm. you know, you got, you know, risky business out there is doing well, magic touch, total air, Bugatti and Badger. Um, is yeah. so would, would total air be an airtime offspring? Is that a descendant? Yeah. From air? yeah. He's an airtime son. Bugatti's an airtime son. Uh, risky business is an airtime grandson. He's a, he's a bad beagle son out of an airtime cow. Um, H19 is a bull we just bought this spring. Um, I We don't buy a ton of bulls, but when I find one that I think has an extraordinary amount of talent that I think will fit and always, we're always looking to improve our set of cattle. Like that's, we're never, we can be happy with a set of cattle, but we can never be satisfied with a set of cattle. Yeah. So like every year, our set of bulls will evolve. You will never see the same set of bulls year after year from our truck because we're always evolving. If they're just a bull and they don't have the opportunity, I feel, to ever develop into an NFR bull mm-hmm. or a PBR bull or whatever the case may be, I I don't want to keep them. Mm-hmm. Like they can go to somebody else and be great for somebody else. But for us, I, I don't 
need to keep them and feed them through the winter. Mm -hmm. Um, so our deal is we'll go through them and then sell a bunch of bulls in the fall. And then like every year we have all these three-year-old bulls coming. Like there's a few bulls that we're really excited about that are three-year-olds that, you know, I, I don't push them uh, super hard during the summer run as a three-year-old, but we get some outs on them. Um, 44 J encore is showing to be, has some potential to be a superstar. Uh, 30 J time wasted. That's another airtime son has, has some potential to be really, really good. Um, 121, um, uh, rare air, um, time traveler and other, like those are all airtime sons, but they all have that. They have something to them that it's like, okay, we need some outs on them. They need some experience and then we'll really push them hard as a four-year-old. And that's what, um, magic touch is just a four-year-old this year. He's a big bull, but he's just a four-year-old. Um, but yeah, he's, that bull's special. Like he's got some stuff to him that, um, is hard to get, get one to do. And mm -hmm. he also gives those guys an opportunity to go and win every time they, they put their bull rope on them. And so that's, that's exciting. Um, you know, time for magic is another one. He's probably the rankest bull that we own. Um, he actually hurt himself last year in St. Paul, Oregon, um, had broke his leg by just leaving the bucking chute and kicked the back of the bucking chute, just a freak accident. But we healed him up and like, he just had an out uh, up in great falls this last week and like, he's back and he'll be really good. But that just kind of shows you um, the care that they get. Like, that's not typical that, you know, stuff like that happens, but it's not like we just discard them if it does happen. Yeah. It's, it's like, we do everything we can to make sure, you know, that we give him the opportunity to heal right and be good and, and go and do the job that he enjoys doing. So, but yeah, there's, there's, and time for magic is that's another airtime son. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so airtime's giving you a lot of, a lot of good offspring. That's kind of cool to yeah. hear. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty insane. And one thing that um, I kind of the reason why I started doing this because I gravitated towards the livestock and and how people don't understand like how great these athletes like they're athletes like you said like yeah. they understand how strong and how powerful and how fast some of these animals are until you actually see them live at the rodeo or on the cowboy channel. Um, and besides uh, some of those names that you mentioned, what are what are some names that we should be looking out for livestock wise that we should be expecting to be there in Las Vegas in December? Man, you know, it's so hard to tell what what they're going to want for the NFR every year. Um, every year it varies based on the, you know, the, the top Cowboys that, that are going that year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some years um, they take, I mean, just every year is different, I guess I should say. The ones that I think have that potential, obviously uh, Bugatti, who was there last year, Lapua, who was there last year, um, you know, I, I really think Magic Touch has the potential to 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 go as well. Um, Badger, um, he's had a great year. They just won the rodeo in Great Falls on him. Um, time for Magic. If we can get a few more outs on him, like that's our biggest thing. We'll we'll get enough outs on him to get his eight outs before uh, the end of Pendleton. But I mean, that's he's short on outs right now just because he just got healed back up. But he had been to the NFR two years ago. Last year he was off all year, but um, so those are the ones that, you know, I probably have the highest hopes for. Um, yeah. I mean, total air obviously is good enough to go. Mm -hmm. He was good enough to go last year too, though. And, but they don't tend to like those really big strong bulls. And when you talk about a big strong bull, like that bull is probably 1900 to 1950 pounds. He's a massive animal. So to do what he does is kind of a freak. Yeah. So it just depends. Like I said, it depends on what they want. And I think we have enough for him to pick from it just mm -hmm. depends on which ones they pick. hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, Matt, I couldn't thank you enough for joining us and, and, you know, talking about all these great animals and the kind of process you take to make these animals even greater. And I'm super excited to see what the Phenom Genetics and Sankey Pro Rodeo Company has coming down the road here for the rest of the season and what y'all do here in December at Las Vegas as well. So I just want to say thank you for joining us and and giving us all this great knowledge about how you take care of your animals and everything that goes Absolutely. into the whole stock contracting business. I appreciate you having us and and I appreciate you, you know, doing this stuff about the animals. That's that's a big part of it. 
And that's what makes, uh, you know, we're all in this for the same reason, and that's to promote the sport of rodeo. And this is a, another great way to do it. So I appreciate you taking the time and effort to do it. 